Hello everyone and welcome back to Chess Programming Game Design with me. So in the last lesson what we did was, well, make the pawn promotion fully functional. So perhaps if I can quickly demonstrate. So if we move the pawn, either pawn, to either to the opposite side of its starting position, we are allowed to choose what to switch it to. And yes, I did just change a few things so that I get the correct colored piece and not the opposite colored piece, if you uh, understand what I mean there. So that when I, at least I think I did, did I just make a mistake there? Or did I just not notice? So if I make the pawn, if I make that pawn go to the other side, as you can see, it's a white piece instead of a black, which it was in the at the end of the last lesson. That was incorrect, I just uh, swapped out a few of the things in our main uh, canvas and then switch pawn panel. I swapped those two and then did a bit of swapping of images inside of these. If you do that, you should be fine or just use your common sense. So today, my main goal is to slightly make a few improvements in our code. As you might have probably noticed, we are actually repeating ourselves with this part of the code in all of our piece inherited in the children inherited it's you know what I mean um, so why don't we just basically copy this or cut it out of here and now I press ctrl a it's fine cut it out of there and then let's see where we call um, What's this command called? Check valid moves, I think it was. Yep, check valid moves. Piece, check valid moves is called inside of select piece. And it's called there. So, when once we call check valid moves, we know that after we call check valid moves, we always want to be doing this. So, we have this. And that's fine. We can just remove everything else that resembles that now. And it's going to keep our code shorter. So from the queen, that's also from the knight. Just to make sure that I'm deleting the correct lines. It's from the king. From the pawns. From both pawns. As well as the bishop and the rook. So that's one of the things that we can get rid of. And then the other thing is slightly newer, and that's with the select pieces, so with the piece color display controller, as well as all of the other pieces. So I'm, I've dragged that off the screen. Let me just go into the uh, scripts that I want to go into. So we have pawn to piece on click, and I believe that's this one. Here we go. I have opened it. And then we also have the its inheritance. I think that that's a word. Pawn to black bishop, black knight, black queen, black rook, white bishop, white knight, white queen, white rook. We go to that. Oh, okay. It's asking to reload something. Uh, here we go. For some reason it opened it in another window, but that doesn't exactly matter too much to me. I'm just going to move them into here for now. Um, okay, it is going to be slightly messy apparently, but oh well. So inside of these, we are still repeating ourselves. The only thing that is different is are these two lines. Meaning that we can remove this and these two and put them inside of our pawn to piece on click. So inside of here. Let's just find out where we call replace pawn. So the method replace pawn. Um, let's find it. Replace pawn. So that's the and and we call it over here. So instead of just calling the method, what we do is first of all remove pawn at location of pawn, which we already have, as you can see here. And then why don't we also cut these two lines out and paste them after we call the method. If you want to leave more spaces, you can, it doesn't exactly matter too much. So this means that now we've removed three lines from these 
And because those are all repeating themselves, we can make this code more um, unique, which is what we want to do because we want to be repeating ourselves the least amount possible. Uh, we do, however, have to keep this piece of code inside of all of the pieces because, well, they can be either black, uh, false, or white, true. So that is going to be half unique, if you know what I mean there. I think I've said that quite a few times this video now. So let's just remove these three lines from the rest of the code. There we have it. Uh, so we're just removing it from all eight classes that inherit from pawn to piece on click. And everything else is still going to work the exact same because we do, ha we do still have that code in here. So it's still going to act the same. Uh, this piece texture is unique for all of them. The piece color controller that turn turning to normal is the same for all of them. Uh, this is unique, but they all know with, uh, which one it is because we've given them the texture separately. So if you go into black pieces, for example, the texture which the bishop has is the black bishop texture. The texture which the queen has is the black queen texture. So they will know which piece texture they have inherited. Okay, so now we can just close these down. And once we do that, I want to move on to fixing a few other things to make it more efficient. I did realize that in game manager, we are going to require our, what's it called? If I can find it, I know it's in square. Uh, it's called the uh, does list contain element. We are going to require this method. I think that we deleted it at one point. We had it at one point, then we deleted it. And now we're going to re-add it again. Because, well, it is going to become useful for later use. I'm going to just remove that because we're not going to need anything on the frame. Any updates on the frame? If we do, we can just re-add it. But I don't exactly, can't, I can't exactly think of a good reason to have that there right now. And this is going to be a private method, so I'm just going to put it after our other private met methods. Um, and we're going to need that for our undo button. So the undo button, I, I'm i not sure whether I want to do a whole video on it, uh, because it might take more than a video, or if I just want to paste it in and then let you guys look into it or just copy the code if you want it. I am going to think about that or just do let me know in the comments what you would like to see. Because it's going to be useful for troubleshooting as well if you want to undo a move and so on. So that's that. Now I'm going to go into the piece and what I want to do with the piece is actually remove these two values. Uh, this, as I explained in the last video, I want to do this because if the piece knows which square it's on, then it doesn't have to know its own coordinates. If it knows where it is on the board, then it can just take the coordinates of the square and use those. I think that that's the best way of doing it. Although it might make the code longer, it's going to make more sense. And so once you delete those two lines, you're probably going to get 34 errors. Don't worry about that, we are going to have a fix for it. So if you want to quickly find out where the error is happening, you can just double click and it's going to lead you right to it. Now we know what we need to fix. We, instead of doing this dot in row, we want to do this dot square of piece dot in row. And that's pretty much all we need to be doing for these errors. Uh, if I, if there's anything different, I think that I'm just going to inform you because this is going to be quite a long and tedious process in my opinion, as there are a lot of changes I need to made, make, made, yeah, that's not even proper English. So if there's anything special that I need to do, which is not just putting an extra dot and square of piece, then I will inform you. Other than that, meet you on the other side. So once you've done that, i.e. going through all of the seven pieces, 
and changing the dot in draw and dot in column to also include the square of piece. Don't forget to do it in the game manager. Uh, the only error I got was in castling. I think that that is the only error you should have gotten. And then also in square, you have two errors. Uh, those errors are going to give you these two lines. Either delete them or comment them out because piece in square no longer s contains these uh, attributes in draw and in column, so we no longer need to assign them. And that's why we can just delete them or comment them out. The game still works exactly the same. Uh, I don't have to demonstrate that because I tested it out and it does work. You can test it out yourself if something is wrong, then do let me know. I will try to help you with that. So I think that I'm actually going to leave this video at that today. I know it's slightly shorter, but that's why you have the slightly longer videos to compensate for the slightly shorter videos. And I, as I said, I do want to keep videos at t 10 to 15 minutes length. And this is about 10 minutes. So anyway, if you have any questions, do feel free to ask in the comments down below. In the next lesson, what we're going to be doing is either working on the undo button, depending on what we get on in the comments, or actually start working on the chess logic. So things like, um, is the game in check? Is it in checkmate? Is it in stalemate? Who's winning? Who's in check? Uh, whether it's white in check, black in check, or white in checkmate, or black in checkmate, and so on. Or is it just a normal condition? Is it just playing normally? So either that or undo move. Uh, please excuse the vehicles outside. Another person. Um, so if you Please tell me in the comments what you would like to see. Would you like to see me working on the undo button uh, function or method, which we have already kind of started by adding the button. We just disabled it. We have the button there, so that's going to be not that difficult to, and not that UI intensive to uh, add. Or would you like to see the logic coming into place? So just tell me what you would like to see and until next time, thank you so much for watching, please tell me what you would like to see and goodbye.